Hi, this is Precalculus, and we want to talk about average rate of change, which is also called the slope of the secant line. And so what we're going to be dealing with is the average rate of change, the slope and slope of secant line. And then we want to talk about the units that we're going to be using with, with rate of change. And then also go back to the difference quotient and show you where that comes from. Maybe you've seen that before, maybe you haven't. Okay, so look at this warm-up. Go ahead and read that and then see if you can try it and get an answer. And then we'll check you and then you can do warm up number two. So pause and try that. I hope you're able to figure that one out. But if we look at this, how much do we change in that 10 years? Well, we changed by $30. So what we did was we took the final minus the initial and divided by our time. So this would be $30 divided by 10 years which is equal to three. So if you said $3 per year, you were correct. Now when we looked at that, we had the dollars up on top and then we had the years down below. So when we start talking about units here, this one is going to be $3 per year. We usually don't write it like this, but I want you to think about it like this. $3 per year. And so this is how we're going to represent the money per year in units. And then we have the three here. Now, if you wrote it like this, this would be fine, but we're going to lead into this for other situations. So go ahead and do number two and see what you get for number two. Thanks for pausing and working through that. So if you look at this one, this one's exactly the same as warm up number one. However, what happened to my stock price? Well, it decreased over that time. So what is my average rate of change? Well, I need a direction there. So now it's going to be negative $3 per year. So this quantity tells me a lot. I went down by three each year. Here I went up by three each year. So look at that and see where that's at. Okay, if you remember now, what have we been doing here? The slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it's the change in y over the change in x. Now what happens sometimes is that since we're dealing with a rate, instead of having an independent variable that's x, we are going to probably have a delta t because it's a rate which means that we're changing over time. So it's going to be delta t but down below here. And then in the numerator, it would be our dependent variable. What depends upon time? Well, in this case up here, it'd be money, different things. Well, I'm just going to put Y again. But it, it's going to be your change in your dependent variable. So this one is your dependent variable. This one is your independent variable. Yes, money is based on time. Okay. So if we look at an example here. And, uh, well, let me finish up up here. The average rate of change is the slope. They are the same thing, and that's what we're finding. And then we apply our units as well. So let's take a stock example for GE here. What's happened the last five years? Well, if I take a point, and I could use this in years and all that other stuff, but let's just call this time zero. So this is our T, and then this is our function at T, which is our dollars. And this is about $40. This isn't going to be perfect, but we're going to be pretty close here. And then since this is five years, I just asked for five years. This T now is five. So we've gone over five years. And then our Y value is going to be 20. So let me ask you about our rate of change. What's happened? Increased or decreased? Well, obviously, it's been a decrease. So if we find the slope of this line, there's our line right here. This is uh, not necessarily with this stock stuff, but we can call this the secant line. If you remember from geometry, a secant line intersects a circle in two points. So it cuts across the circle. Well, this cuts across our curve, so to speak. It's a little bit weird with this, but we do call this the secant line. And so the average rate of change is the slope of this secant line. 
So if I set this up, this is going to be uh, dollars again per year. So my change in dollars and my change in years. Well, this is going to be 20 minus 40. And then I went five years. So this would be negative 20 over 5. So what did I do? On average, I lost $4 per year. Not very nice, is it? People are hanging on to G GE, hoping that it's going to increase. Now, that is straight stock price. They also pay dividends and stuff, which might give you money back. But we're looking for this money increasing, but it's decreasing. Not so nice. Okay, now let's get to more straight mathematical problems. Average rate of change with gravity. So here is the model that we can use for throwing a ball up into the air. Negative 16 t squared plus v naught t plus s naught. These zeros mean our initial values. So v naught is going to be initial, can you say it? Velocity. Velocity is the speed, but it is also directional. So if you go down, it's going to be negative. It's, if you go up, it's going to be positive. And then S naught, a lot of times in Algebra 2 trig, you had H. H makes more sense because that's your height off the ground. Here they use S for position function. So that's what we're going to be using. And so this is your height off of the ground. So if we throw the ball up in the air, from a height of six feet at a velocity of 70 feet per second. We want to find the height of the ball at those two times. Well, so first of all, we have to write our equation. What do we know? Well, we know that our initial height, which is S naught, is equal to six. And we also know our initial velocity is 70 feet per second. Notice the units on that. Okay, so that's feet per second. Okay, so if we take this then, our position function, and we can write it S of t, not S times t, but S of t as a function, negative 16 t squared plus v naught, which is my initial velocity. It's up in the air. I'm throwing it up, so it's positive. 70 t plus my initial height, which is 6. There's my position function. Now what they ask you is, what is S of zero? What's your height after time zero? Well, this would be six. What is S of four? Well, you're gonna have to plug that in and find that. So I put in my calculator and here I got 30. You should go check that too. So my S of four is 30. And what are the units on these? Well, that's right that this is feet. And this is feet. So now what it says for part B is it says, find the slope of the secant line from 0 to 4. Okay, so I found these two values, and so I can use those, and so I do my slope. So my slope is going to be, now it's going to be my change in my dependent variables. That's going to be my height. And then it's going to be divided by my change in time. And in this case, it's seconds. So don't think of this s as seconds this is position so what I do is I go 30 minus my 6 all over 4 minus 0 so I'm going to get 24 over 4 which would be 6 now what are my units well here I had feet and here I had seconds so this would be feet per second this is a rate rate of change because we have time on the bottom and then we're going to take the feet per second, and then that would be what we call our velocity. So in practical terms, this is our velocity at the instant. I'm sorry, the average velocity. This is our average velocity from t equal to 0 to t equal to 4. This is what it means in practical terms. All right, moving on. What if we want to find the average rate of change? And this is what this is a straight math problem that you might see. The other ones were more practical. This one is less practical, but we can use it 
in a lot of different instances. So what if I wanted the average rate of change of this function on the closed interval from negative 1 to 6? Well, that would give me this point right here. And then if we go up to 6, it would give me this point here. So what happens now is that I want to find the average rate of change between these two points. So I'm going to draw this here. That's my secant line, and I'm going to find my slope of my secant. Well, to find slope, what do you need? Well, I need two points. So in order to get two points, I need to use these. Now, if you look at this, this gets confusing for students sometimes. These are the x-coordinates. So if I need two points, I need x and y. Right? So what I have now is I have a point, negative 1, comma, I need a y. And I have 6, and I need a y. So go ahead and calculate those and see if you can find the slope between them. And I'll come back to you. So I could maybe look at the graph, but I typed these in just to make sure. So at negative 1, I got negative 1.5. And at 6, I got 16. So looking back at my work here now, these are my two points. So then we can calculate the slope. And if I do that, I get 2.5. Hopefully you got that as well. If not, go back and check your calculations. Or check mine to see if I made a mistake. Well, it seems to make sense that I'm going up by 2.5 units for every one unit going over. Now, I don't place the units on this because this is a generic example on the coordinate plane. However, this would be your change in y over your change in x. Now, you may want to um, go back to the other units and check that out. But for this one, we don't put anything there. But it is a rate of change, so we'd be dividing. OK, finally, where does this difference quotient come from? I may have talked about this in class, maybe not. But we've applied this many times. Well, this right here is a slope. And it is actually the slope of the secant line. And I got a picture there, but I also can show you what happens on Sketchpad here. With this, I have a point right here, which we can call x. And then, uh, well, this value is x. And so if I plug it into the function, the y-coordinate is going to be f of x. Then if I come from this x and I slide over some amount, which we call h, what that means then is that my x-coordinate here is going to be x plus h. And there is my x-coordinate. Well, what turns out to be the y-coordinate then? Well, we just take this x plus h and we put it into f of x. That's assuming that this thing is our function f of x. And what happens then, and we'll do this in calculus, but we take the slope of the secant line and we try to make h go to 0 so that we have actually the slope of the tangent line, which would be instantaneous rate of change. OK, so if I do the slope here, well, you don't have to worry about the calculus too much, but I want to do the slope here. So this would be the change in y. So it would be y minus y over x minus x. So going back to the sheet, if I write this out, this is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, my y2 is going to be f of x plus h. My y1 would be f of x. Hopefully, you can see what's happening here. Then I have my x values, x plus h minus the x. And if I simplify that denominator, the x's will cancel out. And so I'm going to be left with simply f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now what they use sometimes instead of h is delta x. Don't let that throw you. That's just one single entity. And you can consider it just like the h. This is called the difference quotient. You've been using it quite a bit. Now you may have seen where it comes from. OK, let's summarize a little bit what we've done. For average rate of change, it's the slope of the secant line. 
The units of the rate of change are the same thing as the units you are dividing in the calculation of the slope. So if it's meters per second, or if it's dollars per year, so on, those would be the units that you would be dealing with. All right, I hope that this gives you a good introduction of average rate of change. I think it's very applicable to a lot of things that we do. So I hope that you'll be using this. Well, I know you'll be using it in calculus. Thank you very much. Have a good day.